Skinner's Theory of Behaviorism Bohus Frederick Skinner, famously known as B.F. Skinner, was a leading American psychologist, Harvard professor and proponent of the behaviorist theory of learning in which learning is viewed as a process of conditioning in an environment of stimulus, reward, and punishment. Skinner explains the difference between informal learning, which occurs naturally, and formal education, which depends on the teacher creating optimal patterns of stimulus and response, that is, reward and punishment. This model of behaviorist learning theory is famously known as operant conditioning. Operant conditioning, also known as instrumental conditioning, is a method of learning where the consequences of a response determine the probability of it being repeated. Through operant conditioning, behavior, which is reinforced, that is, rewarded, will likely be repeated, while behavior which is punished will occur less frequently. It is important to remember that by the 1920s, John B. Watson had left academic psychology, and other behaviorists were becoming influential, proposing new forms of learning other than classical conditioning. One of the most important of these was Skinner's model of behaviorist learning theory. But it must be noted that Skinner's views were slightly less extreme than those of Watson. In fact, Skinner believed that we do have such a thing as a mind, but that it is simply more productive to study observable behavior rather than internal mental events. Skinner's Operant Conditioning The work of Skinner was rooted in a view that classical conditioning was far too simplistic to be a complete explanation of complex human behavior. He believed that the best way to understand behavior is to look at the causes of an action and its consequences. Again, he called this approach operant conditioning. At the core of Skinner's operant conditioning is the view that behavior that is followed by pleasant consequences is likely to be repeated, while behavior followed by unpleasant consequences is less likely to be repeated. It must be noted, however, that this view was based on Edward Thorndike's law of effect. Skinner introduced a new term into the law of effect, that is, reinforcement. So that, for Skinner, a behavior which is reinforced tends to be repeated, that is, strengthened, while behavior which is not reinforced tends to die out or be extinguished, that is, weakened. Skinner studied operant conditioning by conducting experiments using animals, which he placed in a Skinner box, which was similar to Thorndike's puzzle box. A Skinner box, also known as an operant conditioning chamber, is a device used to objectively record an animal's behavior in a compressed time frame. An animal can be rewarded or punished for engaging in certain behaviors, such as lever pressing for rats or key pecking for pigeons. Through his experiment, Skinner was able to identify three types of responses, or operant, that can follow behavior, namely, First, neutral operants, that is, responses from the environment that neither increase nor decrease the probability of a behavior being repeated. Second, reinforces, that is, responses from the environment that increase the probability of a behavior being repeated. Reinforces can be either positive or negative. And third, punishes, that is, responses from the environment that decrease the likelihood of a behavior being repeated. Punishment weakens behavior. According to Skinner, we can, therefore, all think of examples of how our own behavior has been affected by reinforcers and punishers. As a child you probably tried out a number of behaviors and learned from their consequences. For example, if when you were younger you tried smoking at school, and the chief consequence was that you got in with the crowd you always wanted to hang out with, you would have been positively reinforced, that is, rewarded, and would be likely to repeat the behavior. If, however, the main consequence was that you were caught, caned, suspended from school and your parents became involved, you would most certainly have been punished, and you would consequently be much less likely to smoke now. On positive reinforcement 
In positive reinforcement, according to Skinner, a response or behavior is strengthened by rewards, leading to the repetition of desired behavior. Here, the reward is a reinforcing stimulus. Skinner showed how positive reinforcement worked by placing a hungry rat in his Skinner box. The box contained a lever on the side, and as the rat moved about the box, it would accidentally knock the lever. Immediately it did so a food pellet would drop into a container next to the lever. The rats then quickly learned to go straight to the lever after a few times of being put in the box. The consequence of receiving food if they pressed the lever ensured that they would repeat the action again and again. As we can see, positive reinforcement strengthens a behavior by providing a consequence an individual finds rewarding. For example, if your teacher gives you chocolate each time you complete your homework, that is, a reward, you will be more likely to repeat this behavior in the future, thus strengthening the behavior of completing your homework. On negative reinforcement. For Skinner, negative reinforcement is the termination of an unpleasant state following a response. This is known as negative reinforcement because it is the removal of an adverse stimulus which is rewarding to the animal or person. Negative reinforcement strengthens behavior because it stops or removes an unpleasant experience. For example, if you do not complete your homework, you give your teacher chocolate. Hence, you will complete your homework to losing your chocolate, thus strengthening the behavior of completing your homework. Skinner showed how negative reinforcement worked by placing a rat in his Skinner box and then subjecting it to an unpleasant electric current, which caused it some discomfort. As the rat moved around the box it would accidentally knock the lever. Immediately it did so the electric current would be switched off. The rat quickly learned to go straight to the lever after a few times of being put in the box. The consequence of escaping the electric current ensured that they would repeat the action again and again. In fact, Skinner even taught the rat to avoid the electric current by turning on a light just before the electric current came on. The rat soon learned to press the lever when the light came on because they knew that this would stop the electric current being switched on. These two learned responses are known as escape learning and avoidance learning. On punishment Skinner defines punishment as the opposite of reinforcement since it is designed to weaken or eliminate a response rather than increase it. It is an aversive event that decreases the behavior that it follows. Like reinforcement, punishment can work either by directly applying an unpleasant stimulus like a shock after a response, or by removing a potentially rewarding stimulus, for instance, deducting someone's pocket money to punish undesirable behavior. Implication of operant conditioning on education In the conventional learning situation, Operant conditioning applies largely to issues of class and student management, rather than to learning content. It is very relevant to shaping skill performance. A simple way to shape behavior is to provide feedback on learner performance, for examples, compliments, approval, encouragement, and affirmation. A variable ratio produces the highest response rate for students learning a new task, whereby initial reinforcement, for example, praise, occurs at frequent intervals, and as the performance improves, reinforcement occurs less frequently, until eventually only exceptional outcomes are reinforced. For example, if a teacher wanted to encourage students to answer questions in class, she should praise them for every attempt regardless of whether their answer is correct. Gradually, the teacher will only praise the students when their answer is correct, and over time only exceptional answers will be praised. Lastly, unwanted behaviors, such as tardiness and dominating class discussion, can be extinguished through being ignored by the teacher rather than being reinforced by having attention drawn to them.
Of course, this is not an easy task, as the teacher may appear insincere if she thinks too much about the way to behave.